says, screen shared. Amazing. Welcome to today's Sticky Learning Lunch. Good afternoon, Colin. Good to see you, Fabian. Thank you, Howard. Tim, VJ, good to see you again. Thanks for being here. Uh, Baskaran, thank you for being here. We're just going to give it a couple of minutes while more people are arriving, just conscious of time. So I know a couple of people are still coming into the room. Let's just give that a moment just to settle. Ah, looking forward to today's session. Excited to be here. Let's get everyone set up for success as always. Let's make sure I can see what's going on. Good afternoon, Anne. Good to see you. Let's dive in, and as the other people are start, as as they are still arriving, let's let them get into the room. But let's make sure we are setting ourselves up for success in this space right now. As always, there's a phone call. Well, not always, but there was a phone call from my mum. I'll have to speak to her later. Um, let's make sure mobile phones. Let's get this on flight mode. Zero out the distraction. Hundred percent attention. I'll speak to my mum later. Also making sure you've got a drink available, staying hydrated, keeping the brain fluid and moving so that we can maximize the, uh, the development and the learning that's happening here. Hello, Gina. Hello, Gareth. Good to see you both again. Thank you very much for being here. Fresh page, fresh thinking. Let's make sure we're setting up that notepad in the right way so you get the right information. At the top of the page, you're going to write keepers, and these are the things you want to remember, remind yourself, and reignite as you go back and reread those notes to, to, to create new ideas, new thoughts from the learnings that you get from today. And it helps to embed that learning and make it really stick and, and support that behavioral change that helps you to deliver a better result next time. All set, he says. Got the right color pens in hand, I think. Welcome to today's Sticky Learning Lunch with me, Nathan Simmons, Senior Leadership Coach and Trainer for MBM, Making Business Matter, the home of Sticky Learning. And we are the leadership skills and soft skills provider to the grocery and manufacturing industry. The idea of these lunchtime sessions is to give you 20 to 30 minutes of core content. It's going to help you be the best version of you in the work that you do, whether that's at home or if it's you returning back to the office after this current situation. That's it. Let's get into this part. Where are we now? Uh, one, two, three, four. Part five. Part five is hurdle number five of time management. So let's give you a super fast rundown of what's going on. I can see some regular faces here. So we are at hurdle number five. Question for you all for, to, to, to light up the questions box with. What have you got so far that is at the top of your list? that you want to prioritize or action or make sure you embed that's going to help you improve your time management what's one thing that you've taken away from these recent sessions that's helping to improve your time management right now let's see those in the questions box and see what's changing in the world for you all as a result of these sticky learning lunches good afternoon abby clearer capturing and emptying time Absolutely. Clear a capture and empty. Nice. Collating lists and emptying. Good. We're going to talk a little bit more about some of this collation piece today. Interesting. I started looking at some of my own behaviors a little bit deeper as I was preparing this content. What's one thing you're doing differently as a result of these recent sticky learnings? As those are coming in, let's have a quick recap on what we've covered so far. Number one, capturing. Number two, emptying. So your capturing is making is, is the points in time where information comes in, whether it's in your car, at your email. And we're going to talk about an analogy here of the, the waiter in the restaurant, what that capture point is at the table. Emptying is making sure that we're emptying these, these capture points regularly. And deleting is making sure that we're taking things out and crossing them off and removing them at the right time so they're not cluttering up, but also removing things before they come into us. Um, so do we need to be on that email chain? Because actually we're wasting huge amounts of time just deleting emails we didn't need to receive in the first place. Listing, 
making sure that we're taking things out of these spaces and putting them into the right lists? And do we have enough lists and do we trust the list that we've got? Storing. So are we storing the right information and keeping hold of it? Scheduling. Are we putting it into the agenda to make sure it's happened or going to happen? And then how do we make sure we action it? So that's our flowchart for where we need to be. So again, super fast. We cover this in a couple of minutes every session just so you can start to see it, feel it, and remember it. What we've done, what we've covered off, we covered capturing, emptying, listing, deleting, and now we're now on to storing. As I have said, and I will say again, and this is where it's really important, there are no prizes for attempting to remember everything that is going on in your day, okay? The only thing that we get in relation to trying to remember everything that's happening at every single point in time is a hard time when we forget the things. You know, no one's giving us a packet of Haribo or a packet of sweets or a bottle of wine for remembering everything that we get given in a day or you know, for the actions or emails that we get. So we have to have that system in place and a system that we trust so that we can maximize our efforts and our outputs without fear of retribution or reprimand because of what we didn't get at the right place from the, already from these first places, from these first points in this flow. So it's key that you're emptying your head. Now, the most successful people are the ones with the emptiest heads. Why? Because they've got the space to think. They've got the mental bandwidth. And you may have heard me use this phrase previously, and it is about having that mental bandwidth. You know, and it's the same as your, as your broadband as it comes into the house. You know, you can see the little arrows on your phone going up and down or on your laptop. You now, how much are you downloading? How much are you uploading? And that speed is in the relation to how much bandwidth you have. And we as human beings believe that we have a very certain, we have a finite amount of bandwidth. And we have to test it regularly and stretch our capabilities, which enables us to do more. But when we have too many things, because we don't trust, especially our own system and where certain elements are being held, that bandwidth you know, starts to get really tested. And we don't feel comfortable with what's coming in or what's going out, and we start to feel like things are getting dropped. And that's when our, you know, our stress pot starts to fill up. And then we start to have more challenges, like mentally more than physically. It always starts with a thought though, I can't do this, or I forgot that, I should have been doing this. And we get caught in this kind of um, washing machine cycle of being, you know, going through kind of that, that, that change curve of frustration, agitation, and, and upset. But all the time we're sitting in that washing machine, we're not actually taking the next action that's moving us out of that. So when we understand you know, that bandwidth, let's support how much we are capable of. Let's make sure that we're getting things out of here, deleting that so it's freeing up some extra space over here that enables us to think a little bit faster and a little bit more fluid um, and a little bit more focused on what it is we can do and what it is we are doing. Hope this makes sense. Let's free up some of that mental bandwidth, he says. So number one, as always, well not always, but it is empty your head. And that's referring back to some of these previous elements before we even get into this storing phase. Let me make sure that it's being clear. Emptying the capture points, deleting the stuff that you don't need to be working with, and keep that thinking fluid, okay? Um, there was a thought came in and it went really quickly. We'll come back to it when it comes back to me. So the first thing is empty your head. Keep your space as clear as possible. Declutter the thinking. Reminding yesterday, what are you, you, know, what are you saying yes to? Keeping some of that space here, you now what are you saying? How many times are you saying yes wisely to things? 
So you can increase your capacity and your bandwidth to focus on certain things and give it your fuller attention. Number two, he says, where are you emptying to? What do we mean by this? All this stuff coming in, you've got your capture points here. You're taking it out of your capture points. You're listing it. Um, you're deleting certain things. And certain elements are going into storage. And you're holding on to them. So maybe, um, what's the best analogy? Maybe something comes in and you're, you're on a, a web page and you're, you're researching something or looking at something that's really interesting and you think, oh, that'll be really handy. Do you know what? I'm going to style that one. I'm going to highlight that one as, as one I want to keep. I want to bookmark it. And you click bookmark and you say, where do you want to put it? I want to put it at the, the top of the screen so I can see it. Great. So it's there to remind you. And then what happens is you do this three, four, five times. And then you don't have any more room along the top to go to those websites that you need to go to or you want to remember. And all of a sudden you've got a list that goes down the side of the screen. So you have to click on it to see those ones you want to remember. Everyone with me on this? How many, a question to you, open question to you. How many web pages have you got highlighted and bookmarked for you to go back to? Let's see those answers. Rough estimate, you don't need to go to count them because it might take some time. I use Digo, unlimited, 20, 30. 10 with a question mark, yes, have categories loads and loads, 20, good, 20 plus. How many of them do you actually go to on a regular basis? Five. How many do you actually, um, have you gone back to? Sorry, how many have you actually never gone back to? Plenty. <laughs> so this storage point, and why I'm saying this is because you're going, oh, that's a really nice idea. Oh, that, that'd be really interesting. Or oh, maybe I'll read that later. You know, like a Facebook post or something. Oh yeah, that'd be really interesting. Or that article, that's interesting. I'll highlight that article. And then you never go back there. So it's understanding this storage thing is where you're filling up these tabs, this, this bookmark list with all these things that you don't need and you're not really going back to them. And you haven't been there for at least nine months, 12 months, but you haven't deleted it. So it's just another um, con you know, um, comprehension of how we're using storage and we're filling it up with stuff we don't need. And it's a, it seems like a small detail, but we're doing this in lots of different ways. So where are we storing things that are maybe coming into us? Do I need to know about this now? Do I need to keep hold of that? Will that be useful for the future? And it might be that things are useful for the future. Great, keep hold of them. But how many points of storage have you got that are just sitting there accumulating dust? So where are you putting these things? Let me share my screen with you. Let me know if you can see it. Good, good, good. So look, today's activity, I'm just going to move some of the boxes around on my screen so I can see what's going on a bit better. Let's make me really small. So this activity here is you can see the storage points. So list out all your storage points. Think about where they are. And it might be, I'm looking on my desk and I've got an in-tray. I've got a series of trays with some papers in. I've got a, a pile of books over there that I want to read. So that's my, that's one of my storage points. Book, you know, the to read pile. Um, you know, jobs to do. I've got my notebook here with some of the actions in. Again, it's a storage point. I've got my, I've got separate folders in my inbox. And this will be relevant for some of you as well. You know, you set up certain rules and to, um, in your email to make sure that you've got certain things in the right place. So the element, the idea of this is, is to list out all those places of storage where you're keeping stuff. And then it's about stripping down or adding if you need them. Well, actually, am I using it? Am I putting stuff there just to gather dust and it's not actually useful? Okay, is it because it's not useful and it was kind of, oh, that would be nice, but I'm never going to watch it or, or get into that ever again, get rid of it? Or is it, am I putting stuff there? 
but it's it's um, I'm hiding it from myself. I'm distracting myself with other stuff or whatever it is. I'm just not going to like it's not visible enough. You know, on a DIY um, uh, analogy, and there's certain things in our house, and I'll, and I'll leave it out so it reminds me to do it. And for whatever happens, something happens, something happens. And then my wife puts it away because it's been sat in the middle of the kitchen floor for three months. That's an example. And then it doesn't get done for six months because that thing got hidden under the stairs because it wasn't that taking action on it in the first place. How many people can relate to this as an idea or as, a, as an experience? I have a habit of keeping it in front of me so that I can be reminded to do that. Is that a good habit? Yes, it is. It's about making sure, though, that we're scheduling the activity and we're taking action. So it's all well and good, me having whatever it is um, in the middle of the floor to take, you know, in the kitchen floor to take that action. But if I'm not taking it, all I'm doing is frustrating my wife, who's then going to go and put it away so I can't think about it because I can't see it. So it's got to be in the schedule and making things happen. But we talk about that in, on, on Monday and Tuesday. Action one, list out your storage points. Action two, get rid of the ones that aren't working for you. Okay, and also go into those ones that are working for you and get rid of the stuff that isn't getting done. Do you know what? You've got, I've got a pile of business books to read. Never happens, absolutely. Then maybe if you've got the pile of books, it's time to go to Audible and listen to them on audio or on YouTube or whatever it is rather than the book, because maybe that's, you know, there's a time thing going on here. But if you schedule the time to make it happen, you'll take the action. Remove the storage points that aren't working. Amalgamate them with others if you need to keep the content. Have a look at what's being stored and remove the content that's not being used. Or if you think, oh, that would be interesting and you said that 15 months ago, it can't have been that interesting and you're never going to read the article anyway. So just accept it and move on. Action three is about thinking is, is about thinking around what other storage points do you need? Do you need to move something? Do you need to create a new space where this thing is so it becomes relevant and it stays front of thinking so that it does get done? Okay. And then we'll talk looking at your emptying frequencies as well. How long you know you, you how often do you get involved to make sure that you're you know you're going into those storage um, areas. And I'm linking back to that emptying, as I said, there's an element of emptying in a lot of these spaces and also in all these spaces. How are you making sure you're emptying that storage? How, how are you making sure that you're going to get those, you know, book number one that is the most interesting? How are you going to make sure that you're getting that book read and, and emptying it out of that pile? So we just need to have a look at, move it, exactly, get it into the right place. And that maybe it's the, the pile of the books that is intimidating. Maybe it's the size of the actions in that, you know, in that capture point, in that storage point, not to the bin. <laughs> that doesn't count. Doesn't mean it's done. No, it, it, maybe it's the size of it. Okay, so maybe we reduce things. Maybe we have three books and I'm going to start one, or maybe we take it down to one. Size of storage being intimidating, absolutely. Because if there's too much in there, it becomes overwhelming, and we can get we, we feel the pressure of this to-do list. It becomes too much. And we believe because of our bandwidth, our bandwidth can only cope with a certain amount of perceived pressure. And if we create a perceived layer of extra pressure, we won't do it because it's too big. And we only have a certain amount of space to do that. So that you can see on here, we've included one example, you know, reading pile on my desk. Now, that's a prime example. How are you making sure that stuff's getting done? How are you eliminating the stuff in there? How are you moving things off it? Hope this is useful. So the key thing is making sure that well, one of the key things here is making sure that we you know where is that storage, where are you emptying to, and how are you making sure that storage is being cleared down. The analogy that came to my head as I was, you know, as I've been thinking about this session is like being in the restaurant. And as I said earlier, that capture point, you know, for the information coming in is the waiter standing at the table, the capture point is at the table. They tell us what we want. Okay, they want this, this, and this, and this. So we make the appropriate list. So we you know we're emptying, and we've got the, the, the capture point is at the table, we're emptying it into that list. We're making sure that we're getting the stuff from here onto here is coherent. 
and we know exactly what each person is having and we know what the actions are that are required to make sure that this restaurant trip is perfect. The next thing that we want to do is you actually want to send this to storage. Who here has worked in a restaurant at some point? Yes or no? Who's worked in the hospitality industry? I highly recommend it if you haven't. It is hard, right. So the moment that you take that, that order, you go to the kitchen, you give it to the chef, you say, chef, check on, chef takes it, chef reads the list, bam, top of the hot plate, he's now put it into storage. It is now being stored on the hot plate while he's doing his thing and he's taking the actions. It's scheduled next 30 minutes, take an action. He takes that order, once that has been done and it's been actioned, it can then be deleted. It goes on the spike next to that, so that then can go and goes into another storage box to be given to reception so they can then um, go through the pricing and make sure that the customer has billed the appropriate amount of money at the end of their visit. Everyone with me with this analogy, yes or no? Even if you haven't worked, does, you know, does this make sense as a kind of as a flow? Good. So we see where the information is, especially in this structure. We've caught it, we've emptied it out of that point, we've listed it, it's gone into storage, it's been scheduled, it's taken action. Once that's done, it's gone to reception, it gets deleted out, job done. It is vital though, you know, is making sure we're putting that information in the right places so that we know that we can then move into our, our schedule. We know when it needs to be done at the right time. Have we set an alarm for it? Now, Google does this phenomenal thing where it gives you those little alerts. This hasn't been touched for five days. Do you want to take action on it? That sort of thing. So it's helping us put it in the right spots so that we can know where the next parts are and helps us to take action at the right time because it's in front of us in the right way. And I've already asked this question. I'm going to shift the question very slightly because the question here says, where do you need to create storage? So let me change it to two questions. One, what are your best areas of storage? What are your most, you know, your most easily accessible storage points that you're using, you know, you're maximizing their potential more of the time? Which ones are they? You've got email folders already come in so we're starting to create some of the thinking that goes with this but in this you know it's how do you need to then adapt or amend some of those other storage points to make sure you maximize the attention you're giving them and, and eliminate things out of them and get them done what is it you need to do to those storage points to help maximize and, and get more out of them This is for you to think about. Build them into my routines, exactly this. Habit stack, we mentioned this yesterday. Habit stack, so when you're doing something else, go in there and check it. When I'm having my coffee, I'm, I'm, I'm emptying my capture points while I'm having a cup of coffee, I'm listening, okay, that's useful there, but I need to do that, okay, bam, that goes into storage, that becomes a task over here, that, you know, whatever it is, we start to move them around. We start to get a bit more aware of these things. And as I said about emptying, you know, deleting, sorry, yesterday, we looked at those emails that you get coming in, delete some of them. You don't need all of them for sure, okay? Whether it's the internal ones, the external ones, start deleting them. Go and look at your storage points. Do you have, even as a start of a 10, going on your bookmarks for your web pages, do you have um, links on there that you will never go to? And my, you know, biggest question, are you actually going to go back to it or is it just sitting on there because you hoped you'd go and see it six months ago? And if it's the latter, and you know, you've never been back to it, you're not likely to ever go to it. So just delete it or take the action and remove it. So thinking about all your different storage points, is there stuff in there that you put in there that you thought, oh yeah, maybe, oh that would be nice too. And you've never been there or you're never gonna do it, delete them. Create yourself with some extra bandwidth and reduce the intensity of that, that thing 
so that actually maybe you take the actions faster. I hope this is useful. 21. What's been useful from today's session that is going to help you improve the your time management strategy? Empty your head. Jane, you're always welcome, whatever time you arrive. Thank you for being here. Empty your head, absolutely. There are no prizes for keeping all this stuff upstairs. Okay, get it into onto paper, get it out. Only store what you need, absolutely, to get me thinking about all of my storage bad habits. Yeah, absolutely. Review storage points, good. Take the action, have a look at them. You know, you just empty the clutter. You will find at different points we're keeping things in here and it's just causing us clutter. So actually, if we're trying to take something out of here and trying to put it over, there's already too much in our schedule because we haven't taken things out of it. We're just going to feel like we're shoveling. Or was it those videos you see of the guys in the flood and they're trying to use, you know, the... They're, they're, they're scooping up water out of the shop and then throwing it out the door, you know, but the water's coming in the back door. Now keep storage points at a manageable level. Absolutely. Amazing. Some really good stuff in it. Questions. These are, these, are, these are the things that we know we can just take small actions in each of these areas. It's going to help improve our time management and our action taking. We are going to be more efficient. It's not for anybody else, it's for us and our own sanity to make sure we're delivering the best possible results for ourselves. Questions. What questions have you got for me right now around storage and time management? And while that's coming in, I totally flew into this again, and I'm going to get this as a better habit, is registration for tomorrow's session. If you have not registered for tomorrow's session, I would A, be very surprised, and B, now is the time to do that. The link for tomorrow's session is in the chat box there. You can get registered for tomorrow's session. We're going to look at scheduling. Tomorrow, no, sorry, no, it's Friday. On Monday, we're going to look at scheduling. And we're going to build on that, okay? We're going to keep that going. The other thing, you know, for these, you can see the link there for the sticky learning lunches. Next week, we're going to be diving into category management. So Wednesday the 17th, we're going to be looking at category management. That's going to be with myself and also Andy Palmer. It works. We, we work together at MBM. And he, one of his um, areas of expertise is category management. This isn't going to be relevant for everyone. I get it. I absolutely get, categorically get it. If, though, you are working in, in food, in manufacturing, whatever it is, and you know there are people inside your business that this, that this is hyper relevant to, that they would get benefit from, and their area and their, you know, their zone of genius is, is category management and they want some extra support, share this link with those people. You know, it can be vital. We're going to do seven days of category management training you know, in these micro learnings to support people for free. Well, and what more could you ask for, in, especially in the food and grocery industry, to support that, that, that shift in thinking to get better results? I'm really looking forward to sharing this space with, with Andy so he can bring that to life for you. So anyone you know in the business, share this link with them, tell them about category management, and we're going to do that from Wednesday next week. No questions coming in. Steely silence. And then from me, category management coaching cards. Some of you have already ordered coaching cards. Some of them may still be on the way, and we're hoping we've had conversations with the printer, and we've had some challenging times getting these to people due to current situation. Huge thanks for the, the patience, really appreciate it. You know, the, the, the cards are there. We have the category management coaching cards for the next week's session. We've got the time management coaching cards also there to help you work through these hurdles. Now, and this is you know massive value add here that's gonna help you work with yourself, your teams, in helping to improve their time management and overcome these hurdles. And also there is then the time management white paper as well. Brilliant. James just said a category and time time management cards have also have arrived. Jane, thank you. I'm really glad they're with you. Um, I know there's a few still floating around in the ether waiting to land on desks and doormats, uh, including a couple of mine. Thank you. Really appreciate A, buying them and B, the patients before for, uh, enabling them to arrive. If you would like access to the white paper for the time, you know, the obstacles in time management white paper, there's going to be a link in the chat box as well. You know, we're trying to add it, well, not even trying, we are adding as much value um, to you all as possible by sharing these skills, you know, the, the content that we've got and concepts and ideas that are going to help you get a better result. That's all we care about. And um, that's what these sessions are about. 
So we just want to add as much value and as much impact to you all individually and you know in your organisations as possible, just to keep that thinking going and developing. I hope this is useful. I hope, the, I hope you're enjoying the cards. I hope you're enjoying the sessions. I hope you're enjoying these guys as well. Yeah. No questions. It doesn't look like there's any questions coming in. Do you know what? I'm going to ask you one more question. One more question for all of you. What is it that you... No, what, what, what's one thing you would like to improve, like me to improve in these sessions? Or would like me to include in these sessions? What's one thing you would like me to add into these sessions, either from a content point of view or from an improvement point of view, to make these sessions even better? Thought I'd get that in there. Just felt the urge to ask, see what comes up. Song and dance routine, Howard. Asking for trouble, Howard. Maybe wear a colourful shirt. I'm not sure about this, Adley. We'll work on that one. I might surprise you next week. Time management sessions have been great. Love that they're short too. Absolutely. Short, punchy, to the point. Look, everyone, as always, thank you for being here. Thank you for your engagement. Thank you for your contribution and your investment in yourself. It's deeply appreciated. Tomorrow is the day off because it's Friday when I will all be thinking about certain other things. My final call out to all of you, if you know teams in your business if you think that there is a team in your department or your team would benefit from a deeper conversation with me and the mbm team you know in this way whether it's live or virtually now is the time to take advantage of that you've seen some of the content that we've been sharing you've, you've heard some of the ideas and the way they're presented and it would be an absolute honor and a pleasure to share even more depth of content with you and your teams and your businesses if that is appropriate have the link for the virtual classrooms in the chat box you can reach out and speak to us and we can start to build that conversation and help you go even further in what you're doing. Everyone, thank you again. Deeply appreciated. And I look forward to seeing you on Monday for the last two, Monday and Tuesday for the last two hurdles of time management. Um, look forward to, oh, hello. Look forward to seeing you then. Have a great rest of your day.